everyone and welcome back. I know it has been a bit of a minute but we can talk about that some other time because we are getting to the time of year during which folks who made resolutions to lose weight and put themselves on purposefully low calorie diets have failed. They failed because purposefully low calorie diets always fail in the long term and those diets always fail because they are impossible to endure and because they prime our bodies to gain fat. There are endless strategies that we can use to restrict calories in order to lose weight and those strategies like purposefully low calorie diets, lots of exercise or diet pills will make us lose body weight initially. But, and this is a huge but, we will gain every single ounce back plus some if we do not strictly maintain and increase that restriction forever. This statement is based on hundreds to thousands of peer-reviewed scientific articles that have studied the process of weight loss and the nearly universal process of weight regain following purposeful low calorie dieting. So the question we would be wise to ask before starting any diet is, can I maintain this calorically restricted eating pattern every single moment of every single day for the rest of my life? Because on a diet that is purposefully designed to provide fewer calories than your body physically needs to survive, your physiology will change in such a way that your body and your fat cells will become primed to gain body fat with every single dietary slip, every single one. It will also be more likely that your body will add even more fat cells to your frame during that regain. But why? Why do low calorie diets change our physiology to prime us for weight gain? Is this some kind of like cruel universal joke? Quite the opposite. This happens because the human body evolved under conditions that would have never allowed for significant weight gain in the first place. And so the human body has very few and very weak mechanisms in place to control body fat gain. We, like most of life, evolved under conditions of regular food scarcity and predation. The foods available to us were either whole plant foods, aka unprocessed plants found in their natural forms, or they were animals that would run away quite quickly and often escape. Calories were hard to come by, and so the humans that survived and passed on their genes were very good at conserving and saving calories whenever possible. If body fat gain did occur during a time of particular abundance, all the better, no big deal because the one guarantee back then is that there will be a shortage of food at some point in the future, and the prehistoric human who has been blessed with a few extra weeks or months worth of calories stuck to their bodies is much more likely to survive a potential famine. Along similar lines, if our scarcity-ready bodies register a sudden drop in the fullness of our fat cells, as happens with a purposefully low calorie weight loss diet, you better bet that sets off major, oh crap, we're gonna die, alarm bells in the brain. Weight loss that is fast or significant and occurs in conjunction with diminished caloric availability triggers a hormonal cascade that brings the human body into conserve and forage mode. When this mode was created, peanut butter foraging in my pantry didn't exist. Which brings us to how low calorie diets ruin our lives. I mean, prime us for weight gain. Most importantly, low calorie diets 
lower metabolic rate. This change happens quickly within days or weeks of a diet beginning and the metabolic lowering effects last for a long, long, long time. Well beyond the day or week that we gave up our impossible low calorie diet attempt. A very well studied topic is the effect that low calorie diets have on the thyroid. In case you are not familiar, the thyroid is a gland in your neck and it basically determines your metabolic rate. It is well known and well shown that purposefully low calorie diets lower thyroid function. Low calorie diets decrease our output of thyroid hormones and they impede the conversion of thyroid hormones into their active forms. This lowers basal metabolic rate. Equally well studied is the loss of fat free mass on purposefully low calorie diets. We do not just lose fat on these diets, we also lose bone and muscle mass, and muscle particularly is exceptionally metabolically active. It burns through hundreds of calories every single day, and as muscle decreases, so does our basal metabolic rate. As mentioned earlier, low calorie diets also prime us for future fat storage. On low calorie diets, cortisol and its related stress hormones increase, leading to insulin dysregulation that encourages as many consumed calories as possible to be stored as body fat. As low calorie intake and fat loss is registered by the body, various appetite regulating hormones are adjusted to create intense, impossible to ignore cravings for our preferred calorie dense foods. These and other metabolic changes persist long after low calorie diet attempts have been abandoned, as has been shown by many, many thorough and heartbreaking studies on weight loss and the virtually inevitable weight regain. It is a sad, unfair fact that people who have dedicated themselves to weight loss via purposefully low calorie diets have manifested chronically depressed metabolic rates that are caused by low calorie dieting. It is even more troubling that many medical professionals still recommend extremely low calorie diets to overweight and obese patients, even though these diets have been clinically shown to cause rebound weight gain, often to a higher weight than the patient was to begin with. So knowing that these changes are taking place, Scientifically speaking, we cannot do a heavily restricted diet to kickstart our weight loss and then switch to something that's more moderate for maintenance. It just doesn't work. And I know that there are plenty of diet books and magazines and influencers and most tragically, medical doctors who still claim otherwise, but statistically speaking, a purposefully calorically restricted diet will result in weight gain after only a few months. Studies looking at obese patients acknowledge that weight loss only really persists for about six months, no matter how much weight the study participant had to lose. After six months, the metabolic changes overwhelmed the dietary changes and weight loss stopped. And then weight regain began, even when the dieter remained compliant. And as I'm sure we have all experienced, non-compliance in the form of momentarily caving to the relentless cravings of low calorie diets speeds the weight regain process even more. You know, clinically, a weight loss attempt is considered a success as long as weight regain doesn't eclipse the original weight. And even with this pathetic parameter of success, very few dieters are clinically successful as a significant portion end up heavier than they were when they started their diet. The setup for failure is so unfair. Failed diets are virtually always blamed on the dieter. And while I know there are a lot of people in the world who like just don't care about their health or their weight or whatever, 
most of the folks that I know and love put their heart and souls into trying to do the right thing, into doing what they're told is the right thing, but it's a setup. And then blaming individuals for being unable to maintain their willpower or accusing them of not actually caring about themselves. Willpower has nothing to do with it. Self-love has nothing to do with it. The intentions of the dieter really have nothing to do with it. The horrendous anti-evidence-based recommendations to purposefully restrict calories has everything to do with it. Traditional, purposefully calorie-restricted diets are ineffective and they are horrible for our long-term physical and mental well-being, period. And it's easy to sit here and talk about the subject, talk about the studies and the statistics, but these are not just data points. These are people who are exhausted and confused and heartbroken and frustrated. They are blaming themselves and they are believing that there's something wrong with them, that they are somehow broken, that they are pathetic failures, and it's just not right. The shame and embarrassment and the despair that I lived with for years as my weight yo-yoed back and forth while I was trying to do the right thing, it was just, it was almost unbearable. So, does this mean that we are all now destined to be the same weight that we are right now for the rest of our lives? Very plainly, no. Not if you prefer to change it. But we have to change it in a better informed way more well-nourished way. And that's what we're gonna be covering in upcoming videos. I am really excited to share with you all the way of eating and moving and living that has allowed my body to effortlessly let go of the weight that it did not need anymore without purposeful restriction, without forcing myself to exercise, without being plagued by cravings, without my weight yo-yoing, without the use of willpower, and with an unlimited abundance of health-sustaining nutrients. For now, if you are on a purposefully calorie-restricted diet, I genuinely invite you to let that go and to be done with it once and for all for the rest of your life. Be free, be free of it, and instead start inviting more abundance into your life and into your diet, an abundance of real, whole foods that are full of necessary and nourishing nutrition. And speaking of which, I'm about ready to go get myself some. I love that for years I've been able to eat big, satisfying portion sizes. Since my meals don't contain concentrated sources of calories, like meats, cheeses, or oils, the calorie count on the, these very filling meals is still surprisingly low. Certainly, if I ate a portion this large that contained meat, cheese, creams, oils, or other concentrated sources of calories, I would be eating double or triple the number of calories. And if I had something like this, this big portion size that was prepared by a restaurant, I think we could easily quadruple or quintuple the calorie count. To be clear, I have no idea how many calories I eat. I never do any measurements or calculations. I never tell myself that I can't have more. Oftentimes, I'm going back for seconds, sometimes thirds if I'm feeling particularly peckish. All I do is focus on filling my plate with whole plant foods that are abundant in nutrients and fiber, and the rest works itself out. Okay. I would qualify this as a fairly good foraged breakfast. So I have some sweet potato, a little bit of soaked oats, some cacao nibs, guava, orange, strawberries from the property. And then I'm just going to be doing yard work and moving mulch for the rest of the day. So I went ahead and prepped my lunch and my dinner alongside my breakfast. For lunch, I'm gonna have a beautiful salad that came from the garden and partially the grocery store. Some lentil dal 
So I just use red lentils and mix them with a little bit of garlic and curry powder, put them in the instant pot for about nine minutes. I threw in a couple of cut up potatoes with that just to add a little bit of bulk. And since potatoes are so full of nutrients and fiber that they're just like super satiating. So I have that alongside some purple sweet potato and pumpkin. And that'll make a beautiful lunch. And I'm just gonna have the same thing for dinner because I know that after all of my yard work escapades, I'm just gonna be like, I'm just gonna be freaking tired. And I'm just gonna wanna sit down and not make any more food and relax for the rest of the night. Okay guys, so thank you so much for joining me for this video. I'm really glad that we finally got to reconnect. I know it's been a long time. So again, thank you for watching and until next time, make better choices for yourself. No one's gonna do it for you and I will see you very soon. Bye. Don't touch the front hairs. Gonna get even frizzier. You can feel the humidity. My hair is just...